Oh, yeah, 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 come on. Ow, oh, 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 come on. Ready to get the machine polisher on the go? Yeah. Let's do this, baby. Let's use your machine so you're familiar with it. Um, yeah, man. Tell you which pad is which. Or we can even write on the back of which pad is which to give you an idea as to what you're working with. Um, maintenance of your pads. Mm -hmm. It's a good habit to use compressed air on your machine to blow the compound out. Yeah. The surface of the, the foam is obviously, depending on the quality of the, the pad, um, open door closed loop pads. Yeah. Um, so over time, the compound fills in the loops and it becomes solid. Right. And it just becomes almost like sandpaper and it does nothing when it's all clogged up. So keeping it all nice and free just means you get the most out of the pad, most out of the product and the most out of the outcome. Um, because that orange pad that we just took off there is beat. It's, it's coming away. This this pad here is about four months old with me. Right. And it looks pretty packet fresh. fresh. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm just going to get rid of is the last compound that I've used in it. Yeah. Because I've used a little bit in there, I can keep it in there. But if I keep stodging it up, it will end up like that. Yeah. In this job, I say this loosely, less polish is more. Right putting so much more on it, you'll end up clogging the pad and not using the product and getting the job done. Yeah. So literally pea size amounts are gonna make your life so, so much easier. Yeah. So I'll get this cleared out just with a bit of a, a bit of a brush and a blowout. Ooh, satisfying. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. come on. Your machine will get you hooked up. Good backing pad on there, bang in, cool. I like to use these like V-shape pads, yeah. just so this backing plate doesn't get too close to plastic and edges. Yeah. Because if it's a flat pad, then you get ding, 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 and you get fouling there. So this is the perfect pad. This is a super soft pad. Mm -hmm. Red pad is in the lighter end of the spectrum. I like to use like a, a traffic light system. Yeah. Green is hard. Yeah. Yellow is medium. Red oh, is light, and, light yeah. and foamy. Yeah. And if you use that theory, every other color, different manufacturers will just have a different traffic light system for their pads and polish. Yeah. So I could get four of the same pad from four different companies and they'd all be different colors. Right. So we'll just get you souped up and hooked up with one supplier, one color system, yeah. and just go with the rating of soft, medium, or hard. Yeah. Forget all the inners and everything else, any other colors. Yeah. If it says on the pad medium and it's blue, purple, yellow, pink, you know it's medium. Yeah. All the other colors can throw you. So this is a super soft okay. um, or light polish or, yeah. It's not medium and it's not heavy, so it's gonna be the lighter end of the spectrum. Yeah. Ow, what? Oh, 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 come on. Because this is a Fiesta, I wanna make your polishing experience as easy as possible. Mm -hmm. This pad, is really nice and soft, so it's got some movement to it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With a hard pad, you're kind of fixed and you're like ugh, ugh, yeah. battling with it. Yeah. So I'm gonna got a nice soft pad and a nice soft polish, mm -hmm. which is gonna break down really nice and easily. You'll be able to use nice and easily. And the aim of the game, I'm gonna put some lines on this polisher, is to keep this machine spinning yeah. at all times. Yeah. Because it's a safe machine, you get to an edge and it will stop. Right. As soon as you stop machine polishing and stools, yeah. you're not actually working against, against anything, against the panel. No. So the idea is to massage the whole panel with the pad and the compound to get a nice, clean, shiny result. Right, okay. Yeah? Yeah. That's all about keeping the pad flat against the machine. And as you can see, it, you know, we've got a bit of a curve here. Yeah. So it's making sure that we match the machine to match the curve of the panel. Right. Because if we don't, then we get uneven pressure on the pad, yeah. which means the pad's gonna stall mm -hmm. and you're not gonna get maximum results. Right, okay. So we'll just get that stool out and we'll just, for your kind of jobs, we're gonna be working in a bigger area, yeah. just so we can get the quantity of the card polished in a reasonable time frame. Mm -hmm. we, there's no point fluffing around with little areas, it's just gonna take too long. When yeah. you have to copy and paste that over the whole car, it just takes time yeah. and ultimately, it's probably gonna have a little pre-clean before it gets sold anyway, yeah. so we're not chasing for any marks to be taken out. Here's some polish, we we'll always give it a shake. Yeah. For your first lot of polishing on a fresh pad, mm -hmm. we use three pea-sized yeah. amounts in a triangle shape on there, if you right. get that ready. 
I'll get your stool for you, just so you're nice and comfortable. Come out more like beans and peas. <laughs> if we start the machine up, mm -hmm. always start and finish the machine on the pad. Yeah. One, to stop product flinging everywhere. Two, it's just a really healthy habit to get into. So, well, there's the other half oh. of it. Uh, four, okay, five, six, okay. So, starting the machine on the panel. Yeah. And we're just gonna spread that polish to the area that we wanna work to. Yeah. What I like to do, is put a little marker on the door. Yeah. That's just my finger mark, just to know when to polish up to. Okay. Because otherwise you can easily get carried away with, um, with over polishing areas that you've already done. Yeah. Then we get this machine. See how it's constantly spinning? Yeah, yeah. And we want to keep this. See it stall? Yeah. So it's not doing anything. The only reason it's spinning is because the pad is keeping perfectly flat with the flat panel. Yeah. And what we're going to do is one pass. One pass is left and right, up and down, once. Right. Okay, so that's left and right, down once. This is actually a really hard machine to... Oh, really? Yeah, to make, to make work. Up and down, left and right, once. So the joys of having a little bit of product and a bigger space is that the pad's not too clogged up. Yeah we can then top that up again and do the second half before blowing the door off, right, okay. uh, before blowing the pad out. <laughs> okay, so I put that little marker out of here. Yeah. Um, we just then, you'll see in a minute when you do it yourself. Cool. I've also, no, I've probably just buffed it off. It's really handy, apart from I got my marker here, mm -hmm. to leave a line of polish residue. Right. Just so you know where to start again yeah. from because otherwise you can overlap that area, then you're ending up polishing something that's already been polished. Yeah. These heavier marks, mm -hmm. in a scale of one to 10, there are about eight out of 10 in terms of damage. Yeah. So there's a very, very low chance of being able to remove it with a machine polish. Right. So we're not gonna worry about them. No. What people will be stressed about are the heavy ones. Yeah. Be it Joe, be it anyone who's giving you the briefing, oh, we've got some marks here, got some marks there. The limitation of a polisher is pretty low. Right. So we're not gonna be able to get those marks out yeah. unless they're more like hedge marks yeah. where, I don't think it's got many, but you can just slightly see in the, oh, in the reflection yes. there, there's yeah, light yeah, yeah. ones. There's a good chance of us removing them with yeah. a heavier compound, but these particular heavy ones, it's gone through because a hedge has gone too you know, close. Yeah. Um, like a stick has almost you know, scraped the lacquer off. Yeah. Yeah. And as a rule of thumb, if you can feel it with your fingernail, it's not coming out unless we get the sanding out, which we don't want to get that. For these kind of cars, we just want to get it looking smart, shiny, presentable. Yeah. And they can deal with the, the negotiating of price to allow for the little chips and bits yeah, and bobs. Yeah. So that is a really tricky machine to use. Mm -hmm. It's kind of making your life, it even made my life pretty hard work. Right. Um, speed settings on this machine, you don't really want to go more than four and a half. Nope. Spin it too fast, the, there's too much heat that builds up in the pad. Yeah. Too much heat up here will cause the pad to deteriorate really quickly. Right. The Velcro will come away from the backing pad yeah. and you'll end up burning the motor out a lot sooner than needs be. Right. Getting the pad so hot that this, the backing plate is almost like molten and you can't even like touch it. That's right. how hot it can get. No. So um, yeah, because you've got this machine, we'll use this machine mm -hmm. and I might later on down the line. Not yet, because I don't want to, uh, you know, get Joe to kick off and go, what, I need another machine? Yeah. <laughs> it would make the most out of this situation yeah. um, and get grips with it. It's not making your life difficult, but your life could be a lot easier with a different machine. Yeah. So um, let's use it. Okay. We just need two P size. P Do size. you hear that P? P, not, yeah. not, not balloons. <laughs> <laughs> not golf balls. No. <laughs> uh, two P size amounts of polish on there. Mm -hmm. um, and what we're gonna do is from that line, spread up just up to the wing mirror. Yeah. And then we'll use the wing and the remaining part of the door as a separate panel again. Yeah. Do you okay. know what I mean? Yeah. So we're just breaking it down into bite-sized so chunks. Like 
from here? That kind of area here. will be completely yeah. fine. Okay. No, ne just use the, let the pad and the compound mm -hmm. do the work and the massaging. Right, okay. You're just guiding it pretty much. Too much pressure? Yeah. Not enough pressure? Yeah. Just about right. Just about right. And you hear, uh, you can hear a sound change in the machine. Yeah, yeah. Too much? Yeah. Not enough? Just right. Yeah. Chemical is just there. That is a super finish. That's a super light polish. Again, it comes in a heavy, mm -hmm. medium, and a finish. Mm -hmm. That traffic light system of polishes matches the traffic light system of pads. Right, okay. Each company will have their range and colors yeah. to complement each of the polishing ranges. Right, okay. Speed setting two to three, just to spread everything. And then we'll bring the baby up to four and a half. There we go. Got one. Same again, that's quite a pretty one. Hey, there we go. <laughs> This machine doesn't stall, but it spins backwards. So yours spins clockwise, this spins anti-clockwise, but once you get used to it, it doesn't stall. So I can go any edge and it just keeps going. Whereas a rotary does that, whereas this is like, it's like a DA rotary, but it's way safer. So you don't have to be as scared and I can let the machine do so much more. And because it's spinning so much more efficiently, I can get so much more done. Instead of you trying to, you're trying to tame the machine to spin. And this is what we call a gloss enhancement machine polishing. Because right. we're not getting our torches out to see if we're removing any marks. We're just getting it shiny. Yeah. Get, and using a DA means we're not going to make any more damage to the paintwork yeah. as long as you use the, the light and the medium combinations maximum. Yeah. Don't worry about the heavy because that's, that's a different ball game. Yeah. Um, get it shiny without making marks worse that are in there. Yeah. And we'll get some protection laid down on it as well, which would be perfect timing. And then it's just the finessing details, like dressing the arches, inside windows, which are a little bit bit, bit mucky, yeah. and uh, then the tyres. Would I go over this or avoid this gap? It's up to you. You can use that as an edge, or you can go right up to and <coughs> treat that as one. Yeah. It's oh, up okay. to you. The only thing I'd be aware of is um, the pad going over the edge can put a little bit of polish around the edges. Yeah, yeah. That's the only thing to look at, but it's whatever you feel like routinely on your head. Yeah. Use that as a line to go up to, and then do that as a separate bit, or use that as one big bit, yeah. and then you know that you've wrapped that up together and go up to here. So then you can go from here right along the top. Yeah. And then we've got the game of missing the rubbers. Mm -hmm. I like to I'd like to leave about a centimetre from the rubbers. Yeah. Just because the oscillation of the pad is a high chance of catching the rubber. Yeah. And you'll see on cars that have been done before, you'll just see like random white just, yeah. clumps of where it's just caught. Yeah. So to avoid that, I tend to leave about a centimetre around the edge. Okay. Or if you really want to get up close because it because it's like a faded red and it's really coming up really nice and shiny, yeah. then we'll put some masking tape on them. Nice. But if we don't need to mask, we won't, and we'll get this puppy looking shiny. So I don't know whether to finish up with a wax or a quick detailer. I'll just wing it until somebody complains. <laughs> um, yeah, see how we're feeling. See how we're feeling. It does look a bit shinier, to be honest. politely in this trade it's there's a level of quality that you can achieve and get through the quantity yeah. without taking all day yeah um not all cars are going to need a machine polish because the polar seal may hide and you know the paint might be clean enough to be able to not have to do it yeah but it's really making those yes and no questions does it need it do i need to spend more time yes no save yourself the hassle right okay but quick detailer is also good on the windows, exterior windows as well. Yes. Yeah, yeah, like interior and exterior. To a degree, yeah, because it's got like a quite a high alcohol content on yeah. it that it evaporates. I, it's not... I wouldn't want to use it in the interior. Uh, as a dedicated cleaner, it's pretty useless unless it's on the bodywork. But because it's, it's almost like a window cleaner, yes. that it will leave a little bit of slick behind and evaporate. So it's quite a good all rounder. Yeah.
Oh, he's good, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Even consistent. A little bit of my polish residue there. Not your fault. Yeah, solid. Yeah. Not too much polish residue left. Yeah, banging, mate. Yeah, solid. Solid that. Nice. It normally takes people about eight to ten attempts to get a finish like that. Shiny. Haven't left residue. Thorough. Cool. Then if you copy and pasted that all over. Yeah. Then, mate, that's banging. Not gone over the fuel cap because obviously I don't. I don't want to batter your. Oh, because it's soft enough, you can. Yeah? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. If you use a hard pad, that would go, <clears throat> then the pad would go, gah, 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 and it'll just explode. Yeah. This pad. Oh. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. come on. I mean, yes, but just a clean one. That's got all tire silicon shining on it. Yeah. That's all right. Let me see what I got in mine. Anything looking like that? <laughs> this stuff is, um, it's an all-in-one. Mm -hmm. So it, it's like a light polish, so it fills and hides the swirl marks yeah. temporarily. Mm -hmm. It's got a bit of carnauba wax in there. So even though it's super greasy, it will repel the water really nicely and it will leave a superficial shine. Mm -hmm. Super hydrophobic, fast, easy. It's an all-in-one solution that fills minor paint defects and provides strong SiO2 sealant protection with added carnauba wax for the wet look everyone loves. <laughs> so this is handy to have on the shelf. Again, every company has their own version of this. Bit of wax, banana milkshake. It's, if you smell this stuff, it's gonna blow your brain. It smells so good. It's brilliant. Smell it through the camera, Toby. So good. <laughs> Do you want to have a sniff? <laughs> have, a, have a sniff. Wee. Two little dots. Buff it off pretty much straight away, my man. Yeah. And just chase behind me. Kirkland microfibers, I love them. Admittedly, they've lessened in quality over the years, but they're good, aren't they? They're plush, they're thick, they're, they'd use them again, pop them in the wash, you can use them in interiors. Yeah, they're banging. The personal favorite, there's a bit of snobbery that comes with them, because they are like cheap and cheerful. Get a pack of 36 for like 20 quid. Ow, 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 come on! So what do you use for the tires there? This is Jenny Kem's Long Life Tire Dressing. Wow. Um, so, a uh, bit of engine dressing, vinyl rubber care in the arches, plastic arches. Um, it hides all the mud that we missed. Oh, okay. And makes them look sensational. Yeah. It's probably worth doing this at the beginning. Right. So, a little bit of overspray is going to land on the panel, so we don't want this landing on top of what we're doing, uh, so right. make it a bit greasy. Yeah, yeah. I did forget, but it's not the end of the world.